Bolo Hari Hari Mukunda Morari Rama Krishna Hare Krishna Bolo Hari Hari Mukunda Morari Rama Krishna Hare Krishna Narsimha Vamana Shri Madhusudana Rajendra Nanda Nashama Putana Gatana Kaita Bashatana Jaya Dasarati Rama Purana Gatana Kaita Bashatana Jaya Dasarati Rama Yashoda Jula Lao Govinda Gopala Vrindavana Puranga Jai Radha Kala Gopal Vrindapalo 
Oh, <laughs> 
Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhakti Arbhavati Naishtaki We're reading Srimad Bhagavatam Canto 6, Chapter 16, Text Number 5. Bandu Gyati Ari Madhyasta Mitro Dasina Vidvisha Sarva Eva Hi Sarvesham Bhavanti Kramasho Mita Bandu Jadyari Bandu Jadyari Madhyasta Nitro Dasina Vidvisha 
Sarva eva hi sarvesham Bhavanti kramasho mita Bandhu jatyari madhyashta Mitro dasina vidvisha Sarva eva hi sarvesham Bhavanti kramasho mita Bandhu jatyari madhyasta Mitro dasina vidvisha Sarva eva hi sarvesham Bhavanti kramasho mita
Bandu. Friends. Gyati. Family members. Ari. Enemies. Madhyasta. Neutral. Mitra. Well wishers. Udasina. Indifferent. Vidvisa are envious persons. Sarve all. Eva indeed. He certainly. Sarvesham of all. Bhavanti became Kramasha gradually Mita of one another. Translation In this material world, which advances like a river, that carries away the living entity. All people become friends, relatives and enemies in due course of time. They also act neutrally. They mediate, they despise one another and they act in many other relationships. Nonetheless, despite these various transactions, no one is permanently related. Purport by Srila Prabhupada, it is our practical experience in this material world that the same people, the same person who is one's friend today becomes one's enemy tomorrow. Our relationships as friends, our enemies, family men, our outsiders are actually the results of our different dealings. Chitraketu Maharaj was lamenting for his son who was now dead, but he could have considered the situation otherwise. This living entity, he could have thought, was my enemy in my last life and now having appeared as my son, he is prematurely leaving just to give me pain and agony. Why should he not consider his dead son his former enemy and instead of lamenting be jubilant because of an enemy's death as stated in Bhagavad Gita 3.27 Prakrite kriyamanani gunai karmani sarvashaha. Factually, everything is happening because of our association with the modes of material nature. Therefore, one who is my friend today in association with the mode of goodness may be my enemy tomorrow in association with the mode of passion and ignorance. As the modes of material nature work, in illusion we accept others as friends, enemies, sons or fathers in terms of the reactions of different dealings under different conditions. 
我们在这个物质世界里的实际经验是，同一个人今天是另一个人朋友，明天就成为那个人的敌人。我们的敌友以及家人与外人的关系，其实都是我们与人以不同的方式交往所带来的结果。这个非土王对刚死去的儿子悲伤，但他可以从另一方面想这个问题。他可以想，这个生物前世是我的敌人。现在以我儿子的身份出现，为了让我感到极度痛苦而过早的死去，他为什么不考虑他死去的儿子是他从前的敌人？为什么不欢庆敌人的死，反而要悲伤呢？正如国家法则第三章二十七之节所说，所发生的一切都是与物质自然接触导致的。因此，因今天因为与善良水晶接触。而是我朋友的人，明天有可能因为与激情和愚昧属性接触而成为我的敌人。作为物质自然属性运作的结果，我们在错觉的控制下，把在不同情况下以不同关系交往的其他人视为是朋友、敌人、儿子或父亲。Omma jnana timarandasya jnana chana shalakaya chaksur militanyena tesmai shri gurave namaha Shri Chaitanya manobhistam stapitam yena bhutale Svayam rupa kadamayam dadati svapadam tekam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yatapada Kamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavam Shya Shri Rupam Sakrajatam Sahagana Raganatam Vitam Tam Sajevam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishaka Nitamscha He Krishna Karana Sindhu Dhina Bandhu Chagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Dapta Kanchana Gorange Radhe Vrindavanishwari Vishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kaupata Rupyascha Kripa Sindhu Vaye Vacha Patitanam Pavani Vyo Vaishnavi Vyo Namo Nama Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Kadadha Shri Vasadhe Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So we're hearing the words of the the dead son of Maharaj Chitraketu, who had been brought back to life by the mystic potency of Narada Muni. Narada Muni brought the dead boy back to life so that the dead boy could give direct instruction to Maharaj Chitraketu. Maharaj Chitraketu was in great lamentation at the death of his son. Maharaj Chitraketu, in the early years of his death, was very sad. We explained yesterday how Maharaj Chitraketu wanted so badly to have a son. But when the son died, when he was still a very young boy, it was very painful to Maharaj Chitra. So Narada Muni came and brought the dead boy back to life, and now the dead boy is giving instruction to his former father. 
，所以他的目的就来到了皇宫，就让这个孩子又起死复生，好让他对他的以前前世的父亲开始讲话。So he's telling his father that these relationships are very temporary. As Srila Prabhupada notes in the purport, somebody may be our friend today and he can be our enemy tomorrow. You can you can have very deep love and affection for someone, but in course of time that love and affection can change can change to hatred. Srila Prabhupada one time was approached by one Indian gentleman who had a a son who was born with Down syndrome. So he, the boy was, you know, retarded, mentally retarded. So the man came to Srila Prabhupada and he asked Prabhupada, why did my son why did I get a son like this? And Srila Prabhupada said to the man, he said, you know, in previous life, this boy who is now your son, he was one of your business associates, and you took money from him. And yet you took money from him and you did not repay him and he hated you for it. And the result was that when the, when he died, he has come as your son in this condition just to give you pain. And so the material nature works like this, the modes of nature put us into different conditions of life. You can be in the mode of goodness one minute, but you may be in the mode of passion and ignorance the next moment. The modes of material nature are very powerful and they control us. How to get free from this material energy? In order to overcome the material energy, we have to simply surrender to Krishna. Devihi Esha Gunamai Mama Maya Duradhyaya Mam eva ye prapadyante mayami tam tarantite. That the material energy is very difficult to overcome. But if we surrender to Krishna, we can easily cross beyond it. So Srila Prabhupada cites very interestingly in the purport that Maharaj Chitraketu could have had a different thought about the death of his son. He could have thought about his son's death in a different way. That he could have thought 
that this boy was my enemy and just came, he just came to give me trouble. And now he's dead, I'm happy, I'm free. Just like in Srimad Bhagavatam, we read about there was this one king, he desired also very much to have a son. Finally, he got some blessing and he was able to have a son. But when the son began to grow, he revealed a very demoniac nature. He would be very, he would kill, he would play with the other boys, he would kill them. He became known as Kru, his name was Venu, he became known as Kru Venu. And the, the, the king was lamenting that he had the son who was so demoniac. At first he wanted so much to have the son, and then when he got the son, the son simply gave him a lot of trouble, a lot of pain. But then he understood that this was special mercy from the Lord. He understood he should not be attached to the son. If the son had been very good and very saintly, then he would be very attached to the son and he would never renounce. But because he had a son who was very demoniac and very cruel and nasty, the father renounced everything and went to live in the forest. So the, the, the king saw this was a special mercy from the Lord that he allowed him to be detached from his son. So we say attachment for the material is the cause of the greatest entanglement. But the same attachment for the spiritual can open the doors to liberation. Lord Kapila was instructing his mother Devahuti in this way. Devahuti had been enjoying with her husband for a long time. And they'd gone to the heavenly planets and they enjoyed in the places where the demigods went. Kardama was her husband and he was a great yogi. By his yoga power she created an aerial mansion which could fly in space. And in this way the two of them went off and they traveled together and they enjoyed all kinds of opulence. But then after he, after Kadama produced some children in the womb of his wife, and she gave birth to daughters. There were nine daughters and one son. And that, that son was the incarnation of God, Lord Kapila. 
So then Kardama Muni then renounced his material life and left his wife and went off to pursue the path of renunciation. And she was left, the, the Devahuti was left in the care of her divine son, Lord Kapila. So Lord Kapila told his mother the, how it's no good to be attached to material relationships. Material relationships will always be temporary and lead to pain and separation. We have to develop the attachment for the spiritual. And in this way, Lord Kapila was directing his mother that she should become attached to the spiritual devotee, to those people who practice spiritual life. So we see in the material world, you, you, we have very deep relationships. You enter into family life. And you have people you're very affectionate with, you love them very much, you're very attached to them. But we cannot stay together forever. And we understand also that sometimes these relationships which can be very pleasing in the beginning, they can quickly turn to some very nasty, hateful relationship. We are influenced by the mode of passion and ignorance. So in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes happiness in the mode of passion. That in the beginning, it is like nectar, but quickly it becomes poison. And this is especially true in the relationship between men and women. And that's why you will see in the material world there's so much divorce. That initially there was so much affection and love and feeling of attachment, but somehow it became all poison. But happiness in the mode of goodness, in the beginning it is like poison, but gradually it becomes nectar. And so that there is the the, the pure relationship in which we can cultivate attachment to the spiritual. The relationships of the material world are always going to be temporary. Even the relationships with the devotees we come together for some time, but we cannot stay together. And we do not know where, where we'll go in the future. 
we come together in the mood of taking up spiritual life. We want to practice seriously spiritual life. But because of our conditioning to the material world, we still have affection for the material body. We have attachments to parents and relatives, family, friends. But all of these relationships are just like so many bubbles in the sea. Just like in the bump, when the waves come in the sea, the waves will produce some bubbles of air. But these bubbles only last a few seconds. So in a similar way, we come together in the material world different relationships, but these relationships are all finished in the course of time. But these relationships can also help us, if we dovetail them, we can use them in the service of Lord Krishna. The relationships of the material world help us that we can use, just like the husband and wife can help each other in the service of Lord Krishna. The wife is considered the better half of the husband. Wife is not the enemy of the husband, she's the better half of the husband. And she has her duties to do, she has to expect it to take care of the home, keep the home clean and tidy. And to have meals prepared for the family. And to take care of the children. To keep the husband happy. And so there are duties for everyone in the material world. And Krishna consciousness does not deny these duties. We have to accept these, these responsibilities. But they can also be dovetailed in Krishna consciousness. Krishna consciousness is not like the, the Buddhist or the, uh, the Mayavada philosophy who all want to renounce the material world. Just like in Buddhism, if you want to become a Buddha, you want to become perfect, you have to renounce the world. You have to become a monk. Mm. But in Krishna consciousness, you can remain in whatever situation you are and practice Krishna consciousness. But not required to give up the material world. But we are required to use it in the service of Krishna. The Buddhist and the Mayavadi people, they renounce the world, they go away from everything. But in Krishna consciousness, we stay in the material, we stay in this world, but we use it for the service of Krishna. But in Krishna consciousness, we stay in the material, we stay in this world, but we use it for the service of Krishna. 
我呃，不是想拒绝奉献者，我们会留在这个物质世界，然后在这里服务不行。Just like some of the devotees also renounce the world, become sannyasis. But a Vaishnava sannyasi renounces in order to utilize the world in Krishna's service. Hmm. The Mayavadis and the Buddhists, they give up the world. They say, no, the, everything is false or illusion. But, but the devotee utilizes everything for Krishna. So family life can also be a great asset in Krishna consciousness. Prahlad Maharaj told his father that his he should he should leave the home and he should go and live in the forest. Prahlad Maharaj told his father he was like an animal in the bottom of a well. And Prahlad Maharaj said he used the word Greha under Kupam, that the, your home is like a blind well. And he said to his father, only hope, your only hope is to go to live in the forest. But Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur was a householder with a large family. And he was a great devotee of Lord Krishna. And he has taught us, he has written in one of his songs, Yedina Grehe Bhajana Deke Grehe Te Golokabaya. That when I worship the deity in my home, then my home becomes a spiritual world. And so you can see the contrast between for a materialistic person and for a devotee. They're both they both may be in family life, but they're in very different conscious. The materialist, he is not considered grihasta. He is he is a grihamedi. His business is simply envy. Grihamedis, they envy other people. Oh, they've got the bigger house. Oh, they've got more children. They envy others. Their whole business is envy of other people. Oh, they have more money than we have. So this is this is the materialistic view of life. They just look at others and they feel bitter if someone has more than them. And if someone has less than them, they look down on them. So, but devotee in Krishna consciousness will have a very different mood. A devotee in Krishna consciousness is a grihasta. He's in a spiritual ashram. 
，可是呢，就觉得奉献者呢，他们的家居生活是 g r i h a s t a 是 g r i h a s t a 灵性的 ashra。So they have a home, but the center of their home is Lord Krishna, and they live together in the home with the family for practicing Krishna consciousness. 他们家居生活是紧紧围绕着 Krishna， 所以他们全体的家庭成员呢，都是围绕着服务 Krishna。Yeah, they understand that they're all spiritual entities, and somehow they've come together in the one family. By the arrangement of the Supreme Lord, man and woman meet together, become husband and wife, and produce children by the grace of the Lord. 在主的安排之下呢。And they raise the children in Krishna consciousness to be devotees. They are not overly concerned with their material situation. They are satisfied with whatever comes about by their honest endeavor. They want to simply depend on the Supreme Lord Krishna. Their business is not simply to be materially prosperous, but at the same time, whatever comes by the grace of the Lord, they can accept and use it for His service. And in course of time, they know that they will be separated again. But they make all arrangements that they will have a good future in the service of Lord Krishna. Are there any questions? Yes, Gita Gamya, Madhuri. What's the difference between spiritual athlete and material athlete? There is no envy in the spiritual world. Envy is in the material world. We are all envious. Ultimately, we are all envious of Krishna. Right? Krishna has more than us. He is better looking than us. He's stronger than us. He's more educated than us. He has everything more than us. So we envy Lord Krishna, and we envy others because they are also part of Krishna. But in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says to Arjuna, "Because you're not envious of me, therefore I'm speaking this knowledge to you." And similarly, Srimad Bhagavatam begins that this Bhagavad Purana is for those who have given up envy. So envy is the material world, but not in the spiritual world. So envy is the material world, but not in the spiritual world. So envy is the material world, but not in the spiritual world. So envy is the material world, but not in the spiritual world. So envy is the material world, but not in the spiritual world. So envy is the material world, but not in the spiritual world. So envy is the material world. A devotee likes to compete with others. They think, "Oh, they have done so nicely to serve Lord Krishna. 
Let me also try to serve Krishna. The gopis compete with each other. Sometimes it appears like there is envy, but that that what appears like envy is only the rasa to increase the pleasure of Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna enjoys when he sees the gopis more in anxiety for him. What's your other question? Somebody borrows, takes money from another man, yeah. and then the man dies, yes. and they can't repay the money. Yes. So the karma is not finished. No, yeah, but the karma will be there in the next life. So this will be the next one, and will continue. Then you have a debt to someone. That debt will continue in the next life. You know, you have that. Somehow there will be a situation where you are obliged to do something for someone. The, the, it will be arranged that you you are put in a situation where you do work for others without getting paid. So there's a reason for it. The reason was that in the past you you borrowed money, you didn't repay it. So you put into the situation in this life where you repay that debt. Material nature arranges these different situations. We don't remember. But Krishna is a super soul, he remembers everything. Just now you mentioned that the devotee's relationship is also temporary. Um, so when two devotees, when they separate, they will be uh, they will feel painful in their heart. So is that the uh, may I ask uh, so when devotees are together they shouldn't be attached to each other very much? 
that devotees are attached to each other in the sense that they're attached to the service which they do for Krishna. Uh, we're attached to the service to Krishna. We're not just attached to the people we do the service with. Sometimes Krishna arranges, he sends very good people, very qualified people to do wonderful service. And sometimes Krishna takes them away. But Prabhupada writes in the purport in Srimad Bhagavatam that we have to accept ultimately that everything is going on under Krishna's plan. Srila Prabhupada had the experience himself. At one point there were some very nice there was a very nice man coming who was a you know, he was a scientist and he was very much inclined to help Prabhupada preach to the scientists. But somehow the man died untimely. So Prabhupada understood, Prabhupada said to the devotees, that Krishna arranges, he said, what, what can we do? We are powerless, we have to accept the plan of Krishna. He brings us together, puts us together for some time, and in course of time we are separated again. But that attachment to the devotee, that is not material, that is spiritual. We see the example in the battle and during the battle of Kurukshetra that at one point Abhimanu, who was the dear son of Arjuna, was killed in the battle. So Arjuna and the Pandavas, they greatly lamented the death of Abhimanu. He was very much loved by all of them. Now, Lord Krishna had just spoken the Bhagavad Gita a few days earlier to Arjuna and he told Arjuna, those who are wise don't lament for the living or the dead. So the Arjuna, was he wrong when he lamented? Was it wrong? Was it just ignorance that he lamented? No, it was natural affection. He had great affection for his son and when the son was killed it was very painful to Arjuna and he did lament. But he went on the next day to fight and to revenge the death of Abhimanu. He, he did not lament and, and think, oh, I'm going away from the world, oh, I'm going, not going to take part in any more. No, but he continued his duty and he fought and he avenged the death of Abhiman. Okay. Any other question? Okay. Marita. Thank you.
Hare Maharaj. Uh, so in this material world, Maharaj, the relationships are not permanent, but we do have permanent relationships in the spiritual world. I understand. And so how, how to balance actually the relationships in this world uh, for the devotee because if we thinking, for instance, of oh, the mother thinking, oh, you are not my son, or the son, no, oh, you are not my father, or, you know, we still have the relationships. Uh, so how a devotee should balance uh, these relationships uh, which are temporary? <laughs> Well, we understand that we are still conditioned souls. We are not yet liberated souls. For the liberated soul, then he doesn't have to worry about any kind of relationship. But in conditioned life, we have responsibilities and we have to recognize our duty as a devotee, that we do want to pa practice some self-realization, but at the same time, we have also duties and commitments and responsibilities in the material world. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to the home of uh, Tapana Mishra and Tapana Mishra had a young son there, Gopal Bhatta, uh, Raghunath Bhatta Goswami. Raghunath Bhatta was the son of Tapana Mishra. So Lord Chaitanya went to the home and he stayed there with Tampana Mishra at home for some time. And the young, the, the, the son wanted to go with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But Lord Chaitanya told the boy that, no, you stay, take care of your mother and father. Then after they leave the world, then you come to Vrindavan. <laughs> So you have a mother and father. If you can keep them in Krishna consciousness, then it's all right. You don't want to be cooking meat and serving non-vegetarian dishes to them. We don't want to be giving money to them to go and buy alcohol and cigarettes. So we have some conditions in associating with our relatives and family. A difficult situation is husband and wife. Sometimes the wife may be practicing and the husband is not practicing. We see more ladies than men practicing Krishna consciousness. 
我们看到了，所以顾全就觉得女性比男性要多。And many of the ladies, they have their husbands. Their husbands are not devotees. But they share each other's karma. Their pious and sinful activities come together. The husband and wife, that their whatever. Good things they do, whatever good things the wife does, the husband gets some benefit, and whatever sins a man may do, the wife also gets some reaction. No, they enjoy each other's pious and. Sinful, and they suffer for each other's sins. So we encourage, you know, the the wife. We don't we don't encourage her to leave the husband, but we encourage the wife to try to make the husband more spiritual, bring him to the spiritual path. Don't don't just try to enjoy the material world, but try to bring the whole family into Krishna consciousness. And then that will be good for everyone. It may take a little austerity. Just like a lot of people are very attached to eating meat and fish and eggs. And we ask people give up these things. People, ordinary people, find it very difficult. They think there's nothing to eat. They think. To be vegetarian means you just eat some green leaves and rice. So it's really important that everyone learns how to cook nice prasadam. That the food should be attractive and tasty and nutritious. And when you cook nice food stuffs, people will be attracted. One of our devotees in Shanghai, he was a software engineer working in a big office, so his wife would cook lunch for him every day, and she'd pre prepare a lunch box. And he take it to office and eat his lunch box. And he told us that when when everybody in the office saw what he was eating, they were they were all saying, "Oh, can you get one for me? Can you bring?" <laughs> they all wanted to eat the same food he was having. 就是在上海呢，有一方面，他是工公司的软件工程师，他妻子呢就每天给他带盒饭带到办公室。然后当这丈夫在中午吃饭的时候打开盒饭的时候。You know, how long can you be satisfied eating KFC or Madumlao? But if you get some nice Krishna prasad prepared. In the home, by a loving wife, then that is better. If it is a loving wife, 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 a loving wife
在家中所做的美味的苦沙的，就会产生巨大的影响。嗯。OK， 阿里克斯，马巴格巴丹，皮扎。